Hi there, my name is Dan, and together, me and you, creative type person, are gonna learn to code a website together. Now there's loads of free stuff here on my channel, uh, but if you want more, check out my website, bringyourownlaptop.com. Hey, welcome to this video. Uh, in this one, we're gonna be learning what responsive web design is and how to do it using something called a media query. So what we'd like to do is that when the screen adjusts to different sizes, okay, I'm just gonna drag this as an example, but what we're trying to do is get it so when it looks on tablet, it looks like something, and when it's a mobile, it looks different, and when a desktop, it all looks different, okay? And that's responsive, okay? It's responding to the screen size. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's jump into Dreamweaver. So in our last video, we just put in some real basic H1, okay, in the HTML, and then we style it in our CSS. Now we need to look at responsiveness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called desktop first uh, CSS. Now, a lot of people do mobile first, so they'll, st um, they'll start styling their mobile um, screens first because it, it can be the hardest screen to design for because it's so small. And for what we're doing in this course, and I find what most people do start with, and what I start with, um, is that I start with my desktop design, and then I scale it down for my mobile. Um, so it's up to you whether you start designing your mobile first or desktop first. Just know, though, that it's sexy to go and do mobile first. People love doing mobile first. Me, I kind of rock the boat a little bit by doing desktop first. But don't worry, it makes no difference to your site and how it works on mobile or tablet. Okay, so what we're gonna do is desktop first. It just means that this H1, okay, is gonna be desktop. And just to make things a little easier, what we're gonna say is we're gonna put in a comment, okay? The comments are this one here, and this guy here with a slash and then the asterisk, that's commenting in CSS, okay? You can see one up there. And it just means anything, uh, anything that I put in uh, here um, is just for people. It's ignored by the browser. So you can write anything in here just to help yourself. Say you finally crack something and you wanna leave a note to yourself, um, you do it in these brackets here or this little kind of like code snippet here. So what I wanna do is this is gonna be my desktop view. Okay, and next what I wanna do is I'm gonna copy and paste that right down here. Now returns don't mean anything in code. Okay, this is gonna be my tablet view. Okay, so what I wanna do is we're gonna learn how to switch this out using something called a media query. Now to write in a media query, it's the at symbol, then you type media, okay? Then you put in brackets, then you type in max width. Okay, so max width, okay? Now in terms of media queries, this is the one thing at the moment that Dreamweaver is uh, not super helpful with. It's the only bit of stuff you're gonna have to write out pretty much all of the syntax for, okay? And um, this is as hard as it gets. Okay, so um, if you're following along, you can copy and paste with the exercise files. You can download those and play along and just copy and paste it out. Or like me, you can write it out. Okay, and we're gonna pick our mobile, uh, sorry, a tablet size now. Now a max width just means we're trying to say what size, you know, what size should this website change? Um, where, you know, what size is a tablet size? Now, the most common at the moment is uh, 768 okay, pixels. Now that will adjust over time, and some people use some slightly different ones, but that's the most common tablet size at the moment. And then I'm gonna put in curly braces. And so that there is your media query. And it just means that anything inside of those two curly braces now is going to be triggered when the browser gets to a width of that. So let's do that, let's do H1, okay, like we did up above. And what we're gonna say is, don't forget your curly braces, so H1, curly brackets, return. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna force the color to change. So we're gonna use color like we did above. I'll use the color picker. I'm gonna pick green. Okay, don't forget the semicolon at the end. So what's gonna happen now is that, let's just put some spacing in there to make it look a little nicer. Okay, it just means that desktop view, it's gonna be this color. But then if the browser happens to be a width of this or less, okay, it is going to change it to this green color. Let's go test that out, let's hit save. Let's jump to our browser. Okay, here it is. So at desktop view, it's red, but when I get down to, hey, hey, look at that. So at the width of seven, six, eight, it's gonna switch the color. And that, my friends, is how responsive web design is done. Not that hard, huh? Okay, people get a little freaked out by it, and it just means that at this size, do this other thing. And it can be, like in our case, we're gonna stack our navigation slightly different. Okay, so we're gonna stack these guys there instead of there. Okay, and with these boxes down the bottom here, instead of stacking them two by two, um, or sorry, three by three on desktop, it's gonna be two by two on tablet. 
Nice. Let's go and do it for mobile as well. Okay, so because we're going to use all that stuff again, nice and easy. Okay, so let's go to mobile, mobile view, and the max width for mobile. This one's a bit of a mobile phones keep changing. They keep releasing new models of iPhone and. So 400 seems to be a really good size. I find it's really useful. It kind of ties in some of the bigger phones, the fabulity ones, um, and also kind of like real traditional. I think, um, how big are iPhones at the moment? I think they're 375 or something like that. So I make it just a little bit bigger to cover in some of the bigger LG Samsung phones. Okay, so mm, this is, yeah, do 400, it'll be fine. Okay, and what we wanna do is we wanna change the color. So I'm gonna delete all this. If I type in semicolon, it should give me my little picker again. Great. And I'm gonna pick, I'll pick pink or magenta or purple, whatever this color is. Okay, remember then, semicolon, don't forget him. Save it. Let's jump out to our browser. Wrong browser. This one here. Okay, so red desktop. Are you ready? Tablet, green. Dun dun dun. Here we go. Pew. Mobile, it is a purpley movie color. I'll dispute that color. Okay, and that is responsive web design. Okay, so in here, my CSS, you can see the nice thing about it. My HTML is super clean and clear. Okay, there's very little on this page. There's just one new line that we added. Okay, but in our styles, okay, we've done, it looks quite complicated, but because you built it with me, right? We're like, actually, I know what that does. It's not actually that hard. Coding isn't as hard as it looks. Okay, so we've got an H1, that's my desktop view. And can you see what's happened here? Um, this flow, okay, this, it's called a cascading style sheet or a, um, CSS. So it means that this thing here, say the font family, it flows down and because the tablet doesn't argue with it and the mobile doesn't argue with it, it stays Gil sends the whole way through, okay, whether it's mobile, tablet or desktop, okay. But color though, there's a bit of a fight going. So what happens is it's desktop unless this little media query gets triggered and do that. Okay, and then it will flow down to here and this little media query goes, hey, I wanna be, uh, when I get down to mobile size, I wanna be this green color as well. Oh, sorry, pinky, purpley, movie color. Okay, so that is a media query. What we need to do now though is switch out our particularly lame H1 and do it with our navigation, okay, where we have though that nav sandwich and things start working. So let's jump out and start doing that now. How good was that, right? If you want more, check out bringyourownlaptop.com.